Hi, my name is Bob and welcome to the homestead, y'all. Uh, today we're going to clean up some cast iron. Christy and I love cooking with cast iron, especially in the wintertime. We, we cook on the wood stove all the time. I'll insert a picture or two of some of the things that we've cooked uh, this winter. Uh, but this, this old cast iron pan here, this is a lodge. It's an older one because it has a smooth bottom, but I picked it up for $5 in an auction. Uh, you can see the bottom has a bunch of crud on it. You can barely read the lodge. Uh, this is just organic matter that needs cleaned up. Of course, it has some rust, uh, but we'll take care of that a little bit later. Uh, you can see I've already scraped the bottom a little bit with some sandpaper and uh, just to see what the bottom looked like. And it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Of course, the sides and the bottom are in real rough shape. This, this needs cleaned up. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna have our bucket of lye here and we're gonna go ahead and put this in the lye. And to start off with, we'll leave it in there several hours, then we'll take it out and we'll scrape this and we'll see how easy it comes off. Uh, we may have to leave it in there overnight. I don't know. Uh, this looks like it's baked on pretty good, so it may have to soak a little bit longer. And then what we'll do is we'll clean it up, we'll clean the rest up off of it, and then we'll go ahead and season this and we'll have us a good uh, lodge pan here. Now, I don't know if I'll keep this one. I like using the Griswolds. Uh, we have several Griswolds with Erie on them. They're the older Griswolds. Uh, they're just great pans. They're seasoned well. They have a mirror finish on the bottom. I'll insert a picture or two of some of those that we have uh, in the video also. Um, but to begin with, we're gonna dump, put this in a bucket of lye. There's a few things I need to talk about. Lye is very caustic, uh, so you definitely need safety glasses and not just regular gloves, but you need rubber gloves to work with it. So I have my pair of rubber gloves sitting here. I'm gonna go ahead and put these on and I'm gonna go ahead and put my safety glasses on and then we'll show you, we'll just set this down in this bucket of lye and I'll talk about that a little bit more. What we have here is our bucket of lye. Of course I have it marked lye and poison on it. If you don't have a bucket of lye already, you can make you one up. You put one pound of lye to five gallons of water. Now this isn't quite full, I leave it down a little bit. Uh, so that way when I put the pan in, it doesn't overflow. But you want to clearly mark your bucket and you want to mark the lid. You want some kind of tight fitting lid because you don't want children or animals getting into this. Uh, but really it's, it's, it's fairly safe as long as you use the proper precautions. Now all we're going to do is set this pan down in here. Now if you have a, a bucket that your pan goes all the way down in, then you'll want to put a piece of wire or something on this. Now I need to put a little bit more water in this, uh, but I can see already it's just starting to eat it, eat at the pan right away. But what we'll do, we'll leave this in here several hours. We'll take it out, we'll rinse it off, and then we'll scrape it and scrub it a little bit and see if some of this gunk doesn't come off here. Now, one thing about working with lye it does a better job the warmer it is. So a lot of times on a sunny day like today, I'll bring the bucket out here and let it let it sit in the sun, or I'll take it in and put it in the house where it's nice and warm. Uh, so that way it works a little bit better. All right, we've let our pan sit overnight. I did turn it once. Uh, we'll take a look at it here and see. Looks pretty good. cleaned up pretty good. Of course, the lye doesn't take the rust off of it. And what I have here is a bucket of clean water, so I'm just gonna dip it down in it and that'll help neutralize that lye. So that way I don't have to worry about it if I get it on me. I'm gonna put my lid back on my bucket. Then we'll take some steel wool and we'll scrape the bottom of this with steel wool. See if we can get the rest of this organic matter off of it. I might have to scrape it and put it back in there again. We'll see. We'll take this piece of steel wool. We'll see how much of that we can get off here. Come 
coming off okay. I think I may have to put it back in for a little while. Like I said, it's been sitting about a day. Clean enough okay, but I think I'll put it back in there and make it a little easier. I'm sure I could rub on this for 30 minutes or so and probably get it all off. That's baked on probably several years worth. The rest of the pan's coming pretty clean. You can see we're down to bare metal. And then we have some rust inside, but we'll take care of that. Maybe a little vinegar and water. And I might have to use the steel wool on it a little bit to finish cleaning it up. But you can see just by using a little bit of steel wool on the inside that that's gotten a lot of that rust off. If we have to, we'll put it in electrolysis. But I don't think this one's that bad. I don't think we'll need to. I think I can get it off with uh, a little bit of elbow grease and some steel wool. But the rest of this organic matter on the bottom I'm going to scrub what little bit I can off, and then I'm going to put this back in the lye solution until tomorrow. And we'll see if we can get the rest of this off. It's looking pretty good. I think this is going to make us a decent pan. I prefer Griswold uh, as far as our cast iron pans go that we use all the time. We use our Griswold pans. And, but this will make a good, this is a 8SK Lodge, it's a number eight. So it'll make a good little pan for us. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and stick it back in the lye and leave it for another day see if we can get the rest of this organic material off here. Now some of this may just be pure carbon. There may not be much organic material left in it. But we'll see. We'll go ahead and put it in. We'll come back and look at it in 24 hours. Just ease him in there. I'll put it back in the shop and we'll check it in 24 hours. Okay, let's check out our pan here. Been in here for about a week now, total. Uh, so anything that's left on this pan at this point is going to be carbon. But you can see it's fairly clean. There's a little bit of rust on the inside. We'll take care of that though with some. Brillo pad here, or steel wool. We'll clean that off. But let's dip it down in our water here and get the lye rinsed off of it where it's a little safer to work with. This is just clean water. Okay, you can see there's a little bit left on it. Hit it with our steel wool and see how much comes off. But at this point, after being in here a week, anything that doesn't come off easy is going to be baked on carbon. Uh, that has been more than enough time to take off any organic material. But it's coming pretty clean. It's looking good. A little bit of elbow grease and I think we'll get this cleaned up. Now some of this thicker stuff here doesn't want to come off. So what I do is just take a, a wire brush. It has a little metal piece the corners. Uh, there's some grass on that. And you can just scrape it. If it doesn't come off scraping.
bit of elbow grease. Finish cleaning this right up. Oh yeah, that's looking good. A little bit of carbon left on here and we'll just scrape that off. get a little bit of surface uh, flash rust on this just because where it's wet what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and dry it off with a towel and then put it on the wood stove and once it's good and dry then we'll go ahead and start the seasoning process of this and I'll show you how to do that so let me go ahead and take this in I'll dry it up dry it off you can see the inside just looks great like I said, they're getting a little bit of flash rust on this where it's wet and getting out into it, but that's no big deal. We'll, get, we'll clean that off. Uh, so the next step is let's dry this off and then we'll season it. Now, if you don't have a wood stove to dry this off, you can dry it with a towel and set your oven at about 200 degrees and put it in the oven, get it good and dry, or you can just set it on your stove top and turn your eye on. Turn it on low and get, you want to get the metal, get this iron uh, completely dry before you start the seasoning process. So like I said, if you don't have a wood stove to set it on, just set it on, put it in your oven 200 degrees for about an hour and that'll dry it completely out or just turn your eye on low and set the pan on there and let it sit for about an hour and get it good and dry. Uh, once you get it dry, then you start the seasoning process. Okay, a little lodge pan. It's good and dry now. It's cooled off a little bit. It's still a little bit warm. I like to put the first coat of oil uh, on a cast iron pan when it's a little bit warm. Uh, what we're going to use is grapeseed oil. You can see 100% grapeseed oil. I like grapeseed oil because it has a high smoke temperature. I think it's around 400, 425 degrees, something like that. Um, it, I've just seemed to have better luck with grapeseed oil, but you can use any kind of oil. A lot of people swear by Crisco. Uh, we don't use Crisco, so I don't have any. Uh, once I get the first few coats of seasoning, then I'll use just regular lard from our American guinea hogs. And uh, from then on, that's all I'll use is lard or some grapeseed oil. Uh, just to keep the pan, every time we cook it, we'll use some kind of oil on it when we get done. But what we need to do now... I always keep grapeseed oil in a little spray bottle. Okay, so what we're going to do is spray this and just put a light coating with a coffee filter and then go back and wipe it clean with a paper towel. So we'll just take a coffee filter, some oil on it, which this one already has some oil on it. I just want to put a light coating. 
just make sure you get into all the little nooks and crannies make sure you get into the handle all you want is just a light film on the whole thing now this one's still a little bit warm where I had it on the wood stove drying for when it came out of the water I'll speed this video up so you don't have to sit and watch it. Uh, then what you want to do is you want to take a paper towel and you want to wipe it. You get as much of that oil off there as you can. So that's what we're doing, getting as much oil as we can because we just want a real thin film and if you'll build it up a little bit at a time with a thin film at a time it'll do so much better if you get too much on there and you put it in your oven or you put it on a wood stove or your stove, to stove top to season it it'll pull on you even if you turn it upside down inside an oven you'll still get like a it just gets sticky so you know if you pull it out and it's real sticky uh, then you put the oil on too thick so to, to keep from that from happening, just put a thin layer of oil and then just come back with a paper towel. You can see how much oil that's pulled off already. So we'll put this on the wood stove. We'll wait for it to smoke. Uh, once it just starts to smoke, then I'll pull it off there. I'll let it cool. I'll just set it off to the side or set it down here and let it cool. And once it cools off, then I'll go ahead and put another layer of oil on it and I'll repeat that three to five times. This pan here, probably about four or five times is what I'll do it. And then I'll cook something in it. And then once you start cooking in a cast iron pan, the more you cook in it, the more seasoned it gets. And the better it'll be, the better nonstick it'll be. And as long as you take care of them, these will last several lifetimes. Uh, the pre-Griswold Eries, the number nine, the number 11 I showed you earlier in the video, they're over 140 years old and they're still in perfect condition. So those will go to my children and then down to my grandchildren. There's no telling how long those will last. Uh, but if you'll take care of your cast iron pan, it'll last for generations. So we'll put it up here. We'll wait for it to smoke. And then we'll repeat that process. Okay, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but our pan's just now starting to smoke. So I'm going to pull him off there. Our stove top's around 550 degrees. Uh, so the pan's good and hot. Like I said, it's just starting to smoke. It's hard for me to see, so I don't know if you can see that in the, in the video. So I'm just going to pull it off here to the side. I'm going to let it sit there and cool. We'll let this cool off, and then we're going to repeat the process. We'll put another thin coat of oil on it, and we'll do that, like I said, four to five times. We'll get the second coating on this and then let it sit probably overnight. I might be able to get another coating on it before I go to bed. It'd be nice to get the third one on tonight and then uh, do four and five tomorrow and maybe cook on it day after tomorrow. Back on the wood stove, this is number two, seasoning number two. Okay, our lodge pan is done. Of course, this was our lodge 8SK. And you remember it was all rusty inside and had a bunch of crud built up on it, but it, it came out beautiful. Uh, I put five coats of seasoning on it, so now it's time to cook. This one has a good flat bottom. It's a little bit heavier because this one was made in the 90s. It has the smooth finish on the inside, so I know it was prior to the turn of the century when they started doing their pre-seasoning. Uh, but it, it, it came out wonderful, you can see. Came out beautiful, uh, both sides of it. It has a good flat bottom. See, it doesn't spin, so it's gonna be great for cooking on the wood stove. And I can't wait to get, get some cornbread in here and go ahead and cook some. 
Uh, we've had a little bit warmer weather here lately, so I haven't been running the wood stove as hot. So we've got some cold weather coming in this week. So Christy and I, we're going to make us some cornbread in this pan. I think it's going to make us a good pan and it's going to last for years and years. If you have any questions or comments about restoring a cast iron pan, please leave it below. And as always, thanks for watching. This is one of my favorite pans, Erie 9 inch. Uh, you can see it's just smooth, it's beautiful. Uh, this is a second series Erie because it doesn't have the scoop handle. So this pan is 140 years old nearly. And we use it just about every day. Beautiful pan. We have the 11 inch, the exact same pan, and we have a 12. But this is a number nine earring, and like I said, we have a number 11 and a number 12.